So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmaduhu wa usalli ala Rasulil Kareem, amma ba'd. A lot of people say to me that, you know, I've lost attraction to my wife, or a lot of wives sometimes uh, feel that the attraction in the marriage has dissipated, and the wives want to do something about it. So, I wrote a small booklet of 50, 60 pages, I don't remember, um, which maybe I'll talk about towards the end, but I'm going to talk about that booklet that I wrote and the lessons in it. Um, and so before I go into the, into the booklet and read parts of the booklet, um, I want to share with you a few verses of the Quran that have to do with what, uh, the ideas that are involved in that book. Okay. So, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in the Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم شهر رمضان The month of Ramadan الذي أنزل فيه القرآن is the month in which Quran was sent down فيه هدى للناس It is guidance for mankind بينات من الهدى والفرقان And it has clear signs of guidance and فرقان It is a, uh, a, a, a measurement by, that separates truth and falsehood. فَمَنْ شَاهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّحْرِ فَلْيَسُمْ I'm sorry, this is not the verse. This is the verse. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hunna, meaning the wives, Hunna libasun lakum. The wives, they are a clothing for you. وَأَنْتُمْ libasun lahunna, And you are a clothing for them. Meaning what? What do we have to do with our clothing? Of course, our clothing, and this is the parable or the metaphor the Quran gave of the relationship between the husband and the wife. That she's a clothing for you, you are a clothing for her. And there is, in this parable, a secret of how to rekindle uh, your relationship with your wife. Okay, And uh, I'm going to talk about that, uh, but I'll mention a few points. Number one, nothing is closer to you than your clothing. So nothing is closer to you than your wife. Or nothing is closer to you than your husband. Which means that if you're sweating or anything's happening or you spill something, the, the impact of that is on your clothing, on your wife and on your spouse. So you have to spend time and energy getting rid of that, that uh, stain, which a lot of times we don't do. But there's another lesson that uh, just as the clothing protects you, keeps you in warmth, uh, protects your secrets, protects your shame. But the one that I want to focus on in this book is that Hunna libasun lakum, the wives, they are a clothing for you and you are a clothing for them. Meaning what? Meaning that you have to change your clothes. Well, if you're married to one wife, you can't change your one wife. But there's other things you can do to create that nobility, you can say, or that uh, that that special spark that uh, creates a freshness, a newness, like new clothes, right? So they're your clothes, but the clothes are changing, and the uniform is changing according to the situation, which I'll be talking about, uh, perhaps. I'm going to see how much I can talk about in the next 30, 40 minutes. Because this is a conversation that I can have for a very long time. So this is the first ayah. The first ayah is, Hunna libasun lakum. They, your wives, are a clothing for you. And sometimes, after some time, you feel like changing clothes. Not the person, but she can also change her uniform, which was what we're going to talk about. So I'm specifically today talking about the loss of attraction the brothers have to the women, because that's a that there's a problem on both sides, but uh, I'm taking care of it on this side first, okay? So, the second verse of the Quran that deals with this situation, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And from His signs, أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ That He's created you from your own selves, أَزْوَاجًا Spouses, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that you will find tranquility in them. Don't fight with them. If you fight with them, you'll find war and fitna. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The men are being told to have sakina, calmness and tranquility. And the same, uh, you can say, 
uh, calmness or poise. Uh, I talk about poise in this little booklet I have, how to uh, establish poise rather than react uh, because of, uh, you know, you're on the edge and so on and so forth. But Allah created you amongst his signs is that he created you from your own selves, azwaj and spouses, male and female, ilayha. So you find tranquility in her, is specific. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And he made for you, or he placed for you, love and mercy. So if you're not in a state of love, you have to be in a state of mercy. Just because you don't feel like you're in love doesn't give you the right to yell, right? And if you are in a state of mercy and you're not yelling, and you are having patience, you're able to be in a situation where you can build a ladder back towards a more mature love. And these are signs for people who think deeply. Okay, So these ayat of Qur'an, the metaphor of the clothing, this verse of the Qur'an that's telling you the different phases of marriage, uh, the different wavelengths that you are either in a state of love or you're in a state of mercy, uh, this is very important. Another thing that almost every sex therapist, couples therapist, you name it, okay, they always say this for couples that are going through difficulties. They always say this to couples that are having uh, attraction issues. And attraction issues happen because of two basic reasons, which I'll come to in a little bit. But one of the things that they say uh, over and over again uh, is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says let's see if it's here uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah again ayah number 216 uh, over here the example is given of fighting and no one likes war right Kutiba alaykum al-qital fighting has been prescribed for you has been ordained for you you have to get ready to fight sometimes wa huwa qurhun lakum and you don't like this. No one, this is, this is a, this, it is disliked amongst human beings, especially who really know about war and know about the pain of war. Nobody likes war after going to war, especially. Maybe you dislike something. But it is good for you. Maybe that thing in your wife that you dislike is good for you. Right? And maybe you love something. And it is actually evil for you. Allah knows and you don't know. So, number one, know that what you don't like could be good. And what you do like could actually be bad. And to learn to have shukr and sakina in the sense of to accept. This is what Allah has ordained for me. She's my wife. This is what Allah ordained for me. Okay. The end, another verse of the Qur'an that I want to share with you. <coughs> uh, Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, his uh, wife-to-be, when she went to the palace, Sabah, when she went to the palace, she said, Aslamtu, I surrender, ma'a Sulaiman, with Sulaiman, lillahi rabbil alameen, I surrender with Sulaiman, lillahi to Allah, who is rabbul alameen. And there are many lessons here too that I will uh, that I've written about in this booklet, but I will be maybe mentioning some of them uh, also uh, if we have enough time. Okay, so I'm just going to talk for the next uh, few minutes, see what happens. Now, uh, this is like a booklet slash notes. Uh, I'm still, you know, writing things up, so some things are in the form of notes. But let me just say to uh, begin, right, the types of attraction or the loss of attraction, they're basically at two levels, okay? Either it is physical, or it's emotional, and because you two have been fighting, and there's bad blood, and because of that resentment, and then now you see everything in a negative way, so even the things that are good about her, you don't really see that. So if you resolve your emotional attraction to her, because there's physical attraction, and then there's emotional attraction. If you resolve your emotional attraction to her, and you're able to sit down and resolve the emotional issues. Usually, by the way, the cycle goes like this, is that if you're able to resolve the emotional issues, it automatically leads to a higher appreciation of the physical uh, person, right? Also, I want to mention that a lot of times, 
you know, when you talk to couples and this and and the and there's been a loss of attraction or they feel like, you know, things are not like they used to be and maybe they never should be like they used to be. Maybe that's not what Allah has uh, is not how Allah has meant it to be. But either way, they want to work on their marriage, which is a good thing. And so uh, the wife feels, you know, I've gained weight or there is uh, uh, a situation in the marriage where we haven't been intimate and so on and so forth. And uh, so what? Uh, she also has, you know, issues. Uh, it could be anything from her self-esteem, her sense of her body issues she knows okay maybe i've gained weight maybe my husband doesn't like me so because of her uh she also feels guilty and then the husband sees that she's not reacting the same way she used to because of her right and sometimes it's both ways that he feels well maybe she doesn't see it's like a like I talked about bidding, right? So somebody wants intimacy. Usually one person wants intimacy more and the other person doesn't want it as much, right? So usually the couple will work on the wavelength of the one who wants intimacy less. Okay. So now uh, what happens is that uh, one person wants, the other person doesn't want, or uh, something like this, or both of them lose attraction. But then they both feel guilty that this is happening, but they don't know what to do about it. And so that's, that's what my booklet uh, was written for, is to kind of like help people come out of that. And so this the sister has to work on certain things, uh, especially if it's because of emotional attraction, right? Sometimes uh, sisters or a wife will lose complete attraction to her husband because of something that he did to hurt her. Just as something as simple as he hurt her, and just because, I mean, I don't mean just because, but I'm saying that it's that delicate of a relationship. So when I say just because, I don't mean, I'm not uh, making it a small issue. I'm saying it is an important issue and it is a delicate relationship. So especially with women, it works differently, right? And for guys, it works differently. So, but what I'm addressing today, I want to address more from the men's side. Um, so which is, that the uh, for some reason there's been an emotional uh, 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 the emotional attraction has decreased which then leads to the sexual uh, attraction decreasing or the physical attraction decreasing or it could just be the if it's just physical and you're still friends and you still love her and you still care for her and you're still crazy about her and all that and it's just a physical aspect that's changed because she's having the third baby or the fourth baby and she hasn't been able to bounce back because a lot of times what's happening nowadays is that, you know, people are getting married later. And when you get married later in life, it's harder to for the female body to bounce back to the way it was compared to when you have babies earlier in life. Your body is able to or the female body is able to bounce back. But still, there are things, many, many things that can be done at just the physical level. In fact, that's an easier problem to deal with than when there is underlining emotional issue that has caused a problem in the attraction between the husband and the wife. Okay, And I'm doing this video because so many brothers uh, have complained to me about not feeling as attracted to their wives for various reasons. So I thought, um, you know, I thought, okay, let me start writing on this uh, little by little. And I started going to different resources, putting it all together. And I thought, you know, I should make a video and uh, see what type of, uh, you know, if this can be a benefit to the people in the Ummah of the Prophet. But I'm going to say that anyone who wants this booklet that I made, uh, it's not a perfect booklet. Don't expect perfect spelling. Uh, don't expect perfect grammar. But I will put in exercises and things like that. It'll be a beneficial book. Um, and it'll have much more than I'll be saying here. And so the people who want it, uh, you know, if they, uh, this is not a charge, this is not a, a reason to, to have the book or not have the book, but anyone can email me. I'll put that in the description in the comment section of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of, uh, in the comment section, I'll put my email or maybe even on this video, if I get a chance, you can email me, um, and I can send you a link. Uh, for donation, if you can give me a $20 donation, 
I'd appreciate that because it did take uh, several several hours putting everything together but that's you know but if you can't then your du'as are good enough and I'm only going to get whatever Allah has written for me so if you want to participate in getting the book and you want to give a donation alhamdulillah there's no charge and if you are able to uh, not give that's fine and if you're able to give then you should you should give according to your means and according to whatever Allah has given you, period. And Allah knows uh, best, okay? <clears throat> so there's uh, physical attraction, emotional attraction. If you, if you fix the emotional attraction, it will increase the physical attraction. If the problem is only physical attraction, then it's uh, relatively easy. It means you have to sit down with your wife and you have to come up with a plan. But don't make her do something. Okay, you have to lose weight and I'm just going to you know, be watching you no, if you're going to ask her to change, you have to change too. And you say, look, uh, and don't say to your wife, hey, you're fat, so I need you to like lose weight. Okay, some people can do that. And if they can do that, that's great. What I recommend is you say, look, I love you. And, you know, uh, I, I want to, f I think I can, you know, I think we can regain our relationship. Uh, and if you become healthy again, so can we have a plan and you do this and what can I do? that you know will make me more attracted to you and you come up with a plan that you do something for her let her do something for you because obviously she didn't um uh gain that weight in a vacuum she gained that weight because of whatever she's doing for you or for the family and all that um so there's a lot more to this as you will see inshallah ta'ala so let me now discuss the other part having said that let me mention maybe perhaps the most important thing in all of this, and that is that what? You have, to, if you want your heart, who, who controls the hearts? Allah controls the hearts. So if you want your attraction to your wife increase, say the dua, ask Allah, and read the dua. رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنْ O Allah, رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا Give us the gift from our wives and our children, قُرَّةَ عَيُنْ That they look like the coolness of our eyes. We're happy when we see them. So, if you're not physically attracted or if you're not emotionally attracted this dua of the quran is very important for you to learn and to memorize and to say for yourself and for your wife and that your coolness of eyes to each other and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who changes the hearts the hearts are in the fingers of allah according to the hadith of the prophet وسلم, or in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the man allah is between the man and his heart not in a physical sense but in his as Allah knows it. Okay? Um, so let me share with you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbana hablana min azwajina. O Allah, grant us from our wives, wadhuriyatina and our children, qurata ayun, the coolness and comfort of our eyes, wajalna lil muttaqina imama, and let us be uh, be able to lead our, our family with taqwa. Okay? This is one meaning of the ayah. So it's very important that what? That you turn to Allah and do dua to Allah and to recognize a problem and go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, and that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring back, uh, because things never go back to the same. This is now how Allah created the universe. Everything is in flux. Everything is changing. And so things, but if you see a significant change, then you need to improve it and you need to improve it. And so, uh, so the, the heart and Allah and bringing Allah into the picture of your du'as and your desires and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is part of taking everything in a positive direction and trying to understand that relationships are not something stagnant. They're always moving and they're always changing and you have to recognize that and you have to maneuver yourself according to that. Okay, people are not the same. You know, the way you are today is not the way you're going to be seven years from now or five years from now. You're going to be a changed person. You're going to be a different person. So the same thing with your wife. And so you have to let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you uh, in a way that will help with that. The other thing that I think is uh, very important, very, very important, is that there has to be a ma man's understanding and a female. E in some ways, even more female. Okay, But a man's understanding of what is femininity. What does it mean to be a female? Or the, the feminine energy. Carl Jung talked about this. Other people talked about this. What does it mean to be a man? Because when you're thinking about physical attraction, unfortunately, 
uh, whether a person likes it or not, our TVs and YouTubes and videos and ads and everything in the world around us has brainwashed us to like a certain projection of the female, right? And what you need to do is rather than like a particular physical uh, type, which is cultural many times, you need to tap into the man. What is feminine? What is what is it about femininity that you're attracted to? Meaning, what's that, that thing that you like in the physical world has some underlining meanings behind it. Um, for example, a softness and to be delicate, um, to be uh, uh, vulnerable and flexible. And I, I might talk about some of these things. And uh, uh, the the male archetype is different than the female archetype. But what is it that, because you have to ask yourself, okay, what do I appreciate about my wife? But if you no longer know because of the world that we live in, what is femininity? What does it mean to be female? Uh, what is it that you, what is the what is it that a, a man can experience that is purely feminine, right? Not in terms of a physical type, but in terms of essence. We're not looking at the form. I don't mean about the form. I mean about the essence. And because many sisters are working and in the career world or they're in the university world and they're studying, they're also in the world of competition and they're in the world that in essence dresses them up, not physically, in essence dresses them up to be like the man. The wife or the female has to learn to get out of that competitive mode uh, into the in, and find her feminine fitra, her female fitra. And the guy has to be a, to be a real man, he has to find his male fitra, right? And finding your male fitra, the opposite, the thing that you're attracted to is the, the female fitra, okay? And I give a diagram uh, of some of that, uh, which I can share, but this is something very important for wives to be aware of, that, uh, you know, that the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when the husband comes home, the wife should be dressed uh, to... Uh, receive the husband in the same way. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu used to change his clothes every time he used to go to his wife because he wanted to, you know, uh, you don't relax uh, those standards. Meaning when people go out and people that are married sometimes forget the amount of work people that are dating, even if they're dating 10 years, 20 years, six years, seven years into their dating relationship, they're still dressing up and going, you know, putting in the energy like it was day one and the people that are married for 10 years are not are they begin to like suffer and so that's on both sides of the husband and the wife and so it's very important that you solve your emotional problems you identify if they're physical issues it's very important that you dress up but dress up how if it's the female the female has to dress up in a feminine way right uh if she's uh you know sometimes uh if she is dressed in uh, her pajamas and uh, what's, you know, pajama suit, let's say, it, 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 it's not necessarily very feminine, uh, that's not really going to help, you know, move things forward. So you have to put your best foot forward, even in marriage. Marriage is an investment. You have to put your time and your money and your investment, and you have to bring out, he has to bring out his manliness. You have to bring out your femininity, right? So that is an absolute must. And to do that, it's very important to understand what does it mean to, what, is, what are the qualities of femininity? What are the qualities that make something female? What are the qualities that make something male? Okay? So that's very important. Just as an example, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who has hair should take care of it. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hair is the beauty of the, of the, of the woman. Okay, so hair, the prophets, there are more than one narration about taking care of hair. The prophet said, having hair is a blessing. There are people who have no hair. And so the prophet said, the one who Allah has given hair should take care of it. So, especially a wife, right? And so there are things that can be done that is in everyone's control. There are some things that are in no one's control. But there are things that are in the people's control. Pay attention to your hair. Because this is where the prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that what? The Prophet said, 
the beauty of the wife of the woman is in the hair. I can't stress enough how much a strong mane of hair helps. It needs to be healthy and well taken care of, because this is what the Prophet said. If you have curly hair, that's perfect. Health is everything, and it shows through your skin and hair the fastest. Feminine women do not do not find taking care of hair as a chore. Okay. They revel in the femininity and the beauty that the hair gives them. Brush your hair regularly and condition it. So this is actually amongst the sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ. And let me share with you other sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ mm -hmm. that he's mentioned. That's, that is that, uh, let me just read this, taking, taking really good care of your skin. This will help flush out any unwanted toxins in your body and keep your body clean. Most men are really attracted to the presence of woman's eyes and her smile. And this is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And also studies show, by the way, that looking into the eyes of your spouse, that couples that are in love, they look into each other's eyes more often than couples that are not in love. And so you're trying to regain, you regain that traction of like restarting that love or getting back to mature love, um, not the love where you know it's like the original love uh, that's dopamine and just lust, but a more mature love. But it begins with smiling, right? Having a good presence, having uh, looking into her eyes and looking into his eyes, right? So that if you want your wife to improve her relationship with you then you have to start looking into her eyes. You have to start smiling with her. You have to start talking to her better, right? And that's all part of the emotional readjustment that I was talking about earlier, that, you know, there's physical attraction and emotional attraction. So that has to be done. Then uh, things that you can do inside the house, if there's only mahrams, or like wear lipsticks or whatever you need to do to uh, to look good in front of your husband, and uh, this has to do with a big problem that's taking place, which is that wives, uh, especially after children, uh, which is a, a big reason why guys lose attraction to women, is that they become one-dimensional, meaning they go into the motherhood mode and they forget about being the wife, right? And so it's very important that you balance both of these. You know, that's what I meant by wahunna libasul lahunna. They're a clothing for you. Sometimes you're in the mother mode. And that's okay. But sometimes you have to be in the wife mode. And that means you have to dress up differently. And when you're in the wife mode, you have to dress up differently. And so when you're with this child, you're dressed up differently. And when you're the other child, you're dressed up. You have different like clothing uh, according to the job in each situation. And so it's very important that women don't get stuck in one dimension. Right? And it's very, very important for the sisters that are in a relationship where they see their, you know, relationship going down with their husbands, one of the most important things that they can do in a conversation is to be playful. This is, if you look at the Prophet ﷺ, I wish, you know, I wish to write, uh, if Allah gives me the tawfiq one day, and the knowledge, because I don't think I have it right now, but I have enough to know it, but not enough to write it, maybe, that, the Prophet's interaction most of the time with his wives or with little children was always playful. He was always playful. He's the most, but this is his investment in that relationship. And so how does a, how does a wife charm or control, for that matter, her husband? She controls him by being playful, by making him laugh by making him have a good time this is the reconnection of the emotional relationship and the same thing with the husband if the husband can make her, her laugh that's great if the wife can make him laugh that's great but that that you know why does a guy why do women think why do women think that uh, guys like a younger girl what do you think is the is it because she's younger or is there something something feminine about it that's behind the form and what is the femininity behind the form is that she's playful and she's cheerful and uh she's not rigid okay um 
and she's spontaneous. So when the wife, I know a lot of sisters are on the edge, right? In their relationship, they're already on the edge. The guy's not doing anything. And co the problem is complex. But if you just look at this problem, then what is needed to solve this problem, because this is a big component of the problem in many marriages, which is this, this sexual starvation or the physical attraction. And so what needs to be done? You need to put, you need to change your clothes. You need to come out of that. I'm on the edge. Okay. You got to come out of that survival mode. You got to get out of that one dimensional state. You know, they are a clothing for you, for the man. So she needs to, you need to wear the clothes that will, that are, that are needed for your husband. And so what does that mean? That it's guys don't leave a wife or a younger girl because she's more attractive. But there are plenty of couples where the husband is, uh, marries, happily marries a girl that's not, other girls will say is not attra that attractive and uh, vice versa, right? So the point is, is that it's not about that. Why does a guy marry, uh, want to be attracted to a younger girl? Because, not because of the form only, but what's behind the form is the attraction to the spontane spontane spontaneousness, the playfulness, the cheerfulness, not being on the edge and being calm and relaxed. As the Quran says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So you'll find tranquility in her, which means what? that the wife has to find time to be tranquil. Like when nighttime comes or after Maghrib, you need to change your uniform and you need to attend to your husband. Now, the sisters will say to me, oh, but you're not talking about the husbands. Yes, I will, I will do that. And I have done that, but I'm going to do that. Okay. But, you know, when, when I'm trying to make both sides understand what the problem is, Right. Of course, the men have to take responsibility. Uh, I might talk a little bit about that. But I'm trying to talk from also the perspective of these verses. And they are a clothing for you. Right. Meaning that there is a certain clothing that you like them to be in. OK. Not in the formal sense of a form, but in essence. Right. That that female lady wife. They need you to be in a certain spot, in a certain way, okay, for them to feel like, okay, yes, if she's, and there, there are things you can do physically, there are things you can do with your attitude, there's things you can do with your calmness, not being on the survival mode, not being you, you, one dimensional, not being in a state where you are escaping from the problem by using your children, right? And so this is very, very important for the sisters because if, you know, so, so if the brothers are having a problem with physical attraction to their wives, right, then they should bring these points or they could show my video to the, to the wives or the, or if even better for me, uh, inshallah, is that if you buy my booklet, then, and if you give me the donation, then it'll, 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 it'll be better if you read it than just listen to it, right? Because I say a lot more in, in that, uh, piece that has been written up okay so <clears throat> it's very very important this is actually important for both sides husband and wife listening 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 how should the husband listen how should the wife listen the, with the playfulness that i was talking about but they should listen so attentively that you can literally regurgitate everything you can re-say everything having a presence listening carefully like you're interested right like it is meaningful having presence means your energy is noticeable now a lot of sisters will say but i have no energy left and i have no i don't i don't have time to give any more energy and i'm done okay and i address that issue in this book too but that is something that has to be dealt with it means that when you are with people especially your man you put your whole heart and soul into being with them Many of us, due to stress or due to the in and in, in, to an inability to offer ourselves emotionally, we try to look like we're present and listening, but then we just look into space, and so to be a hundred and ten percent present. Okay, 
It's really that simple. Now, as far as the wife saying, well, you know, he needs to give first before I give, I say the bigger person is the one who gives first. Just like the one who gives salams first, the bigger person. And sometimes you have to give first to get. Okay? And so sometimes the husband has to. If the husband sees there's a problem in the relationship, he should he needs to invest in her. And she needs to invest in him. And she should never say, and I, I list a bunch of reasons, she should never say no to him in the bedroom for many, many reasons. I, I might touch upon some of them. One of them I'll mention right now, which is that what's the difference then between a friend and a, and, and a marriage? The difference is the intimacy. That's the, that's the component. Otherwise, if you're going to be roommates, then then you're just friends. And so I'm saying this from a guy's perspective, right? You might as well. Uh, and this is the thing is that uh, if somebody's in marriage and they have a beautiful wife and he, they're attracted and the wife is saying no or she's not dressing up so he would be attracted and she's saying no, then that's going to that's like, why are you in the marriage? Right. So that's how the guy thinks. And so there and and the other thing that there are studies uh, that are done that show that when a female is not, okay, uh, does not feel like having intimacy, when a female does not feel like having intimacy, she will feel like it once she starts. And that's true for many, many things in our lives, but that has been, that has been well established and documented, and there's a lot of conversation around this uh, point, okay? So... So this is one of the diagrams that uh, uh, Dr. Basin came up with is the intimacy based model of female sexual response cycle, which is that, you know, she says, I'm not in the mood and but once because why? Uh, I'll just put it very simply. Um, the way guys are sexually aroused through looking, women get sexually aroused by touch. And that's why we have such strict rules in Islam regarding touch. Okay, so, uh, I mean, that's not the only reason, but that's at least one of the reasons, right? So, it's very important that you keep in mind that what? That uh, the, the, once you get started, the end result will be emotional and physical satisfaction. The, you will feel more happier emotionally, and you will feel more happier physically uh, because once you start the process, the arousal automatically kicks in and the mood automatically kicks in. Now, again, this is to the wives that some of the essence aspect of femininity that they need to develop and the man who only looks at TV and sees, okay, this is what I need to be attracted to, needs to tune into that part of himself that's behind the form. Okay, so what does it mean that she's a female okay that she's somebody who feels deeply right she is somebody who is like she's on a cycle it's like weather or like the seasons she she's not she's always changing she's always in a different mood uh, a lot of times and i'll talk i do talk about that i don't know if i'll talk about it today but uh, women feel empty and what to do about it and talk a little bit about that or they feel unfulfilled what to do about that because they need that sense of fulfillment or that emptiness to kind of go away but the way to actually get rid of that is to actually do some of the things the prophet and islam are telling us to do you know so she feels deeply right uh she's not necessarily thinking rationally in the sense that men think uh, she's responsive and alive she's nurturing uh, she can be submissive. And that's why I related to that verse of the Quran, uh, that stop being in a competitive mode because you're in the man's world and you want to be competitive. Men want something opposite of that. They want something submissive. Not all the time. Like I said, there's a uniform. There's a time to do it. Uh, so the... Uh, the, you know, the the submissiveness, uh, I don't know if I should say this, but I'll say this, and then I'll get a lot of heat if 
from my sisters, but this is to understand things deeply, maybe to think about. Maybe what I'm saying has some something to it. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't make it haram to hit women because intimacy is, in fact, if you look at the meaning of the word, daraba means intimacy, the, the F word that we use to cuss also means to hit and to have intimacy, both. You can look that up. So the point is that if, if Allah says you can't hit your wife, a man wouldn't be able to have intimacy with his wife. And so because, uh, and I'm not talking about fetish. I'll talk about that maybe another time. But what I am talking about is that man needs to feel that he is in charge and that she is submitting. And there's no uh, time that man is having intimacy with his wife that he is doesn't uh, take it as a hierarchy that I am having my wife submit to me. That's just how it is. And so it's made, you can say, in the mind of man and in the essence of femininity. Aslamtu ma'a Sulaiman. I surrender with Sulaiman. Islam is surrendering. And part of that, man has to surrender too. A wife has to surrender too. She has to show that she's vulnerable. She has to be willing to... What does men want to take care? And if there's nothing... If you have no vulnerabilities, if you're not vulnerable, what are they going to take care of? Right? If you're like the most powerful person in the world... What is the guy, what, the guy has no emotional need to attach to you because you're just, you're perfectly fine. And so the society teaches women, don't cry, don't do this and be strong and all that. You know, and that's great. But if you're talking about husband-wife relationship, he needs to feel like he's taking care of her and that she needs him and she can use that to her advantage. And so it's, see, there, it's not just physical attraction. There's a lot more of skills that are going on behind the scenes. If women were willing to uh, harness those energies and those powers, and you can even say those states of manipulation, which Islam recognizes, it's, uh, you know, and and so she is she can be she enjoys uh and how how do you find your uh, you know femininity well there are many ways uh, but you know um there are certain hobbies that help taking a shower a cold shower helps taking a bath helps right just finding yourself uh doing dhikr and athkar and reading quran and spirituality helps to find you back in that state right and you're helping you balance between let's say working mother uh, and then being at home as a mother and then being home as a wife and that's all hard but then there's a moment of sikina right there's a moment of just you like submit to Allah and you submit to the husband for the sake of Allah right and you don't argue with the husband for the sake of Allah and that will produce very good results So let me read this. These traits can be cultivated and kept well into your old age. A lot of what men consider to be youthfulness can be found in your femininity if you are willing to develop and harness those. A lot of men may go for a younger woman because younger women tend to be more what? Innocent, youthful, unburdened by life's responsibilities. Their conversation is not about bills and struggles of life and all the troubles of life and always nagging and so on and so forth. That all has its place. You have to change the uniform. Less resentful, not bitter from past relationships and past experiences. So this is the thing is that if you are a wife and you're married and you had past relationships and now you see some of those things in your new relationship and marriage, you got to let it go. And you got to like, so, you know, like I said, there's there, I primarily, I know, even though I'm primarily talking to sisters, but this is for the husband to help him in his relationship with his wife and physical attraction. But obviously because it, it involves the wife, I have to talk to the wives too, to the sisters. 
So <clears throat> this is all very, very important. One of the interesting books that I read a long time ago, maybe I have it somewhere here in my collection of books, uh, The Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands by Dr. Laura Lushlingwood. I used to listen to her uh, all the time at one time. But anyway, uh, the point being here is that um, she says, amongst other people, that, look, uh, you know, I don't necessarily take this position. I think men need to be more men. Okay, that's my position. I think m women take on too much and they're on the edge and women and the men are too lazy, unmotivated and uh, not participating to the level that they should. And there's a reason for that. And one of the reasons for that, that's not in this book, but I'm saying that, is that the society by raising, by putting women on the edge has almost made men want to take a step back. Because the, for men, uh, this being on the edge makes them step back. That conversation aside, men need to take responsibility. But on the other hand, I'm saying this. What other people have said, and that perspective needs to be brought forward because it has some value. Okay, and that is that the reason I don't see that much value in it is because I know that the older generation saw value in it. I don't see that much value in it because it makes me feel like that it takes away the responsibility from men. And that is that you need to know your husband's temperament. You need to know your husband's, um, like, like when he's getting mad, he's just being mad, right? When he's upset, he's, he's, this is not like if a man shouts at, let's say at a five, six, seven degree high in pitch, and a woman shouts seven, five degrees high in pitch. For the man, that's like, it's not a big deal. It's like, okay, it's no big deal. I got angry. I, I, I said some things, or I did some things, or or I, I, I showed strength, or, but the, but the diplomatic wife, uh, who's not on the edge would be able to take that and say, okay, you know, this is my husband's way of dealing with the issues. And she doesn't make it a big deal. She doesn't let it allow it to affect the relationship. She works with him or she works around him, around his personality and around his, uh, you can say, maybe even sometimes aggressive words or aggressive behavior. She doesn't take it personally. When she doesn't take it personally, then he uh, is able to calm down faster, right? Rather than uh, the sister or the wife being on edge and then she's resp and then they're playing like ping pong back and forth in a negative way and that just spirals the whole relationship down. So the lesson for the men, okay, is that don't put her on the edge in the first place and Take responsibility that you have to calm your wife down. You need Sakina. You're the one responsible in the end of the day. Did you bring Sakina into the house or not? Did you bring tranquility into the house or not? Then inside the house, the wife is responsible to know which type of uniform I need to be wearing. That when should I be wearing this? When should I be giving time to my husband and be fully attentive to him? When should I be doing it for the kids? When should I be like giving time to myself? When should I be giving time to my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? All those things have to be balanced. And one of the hardest things to do in the times that we live in is having a balanced life. Right? So, uh, let's continue inshallah. One thing for the brother and the sister that are trying to revive their marriage. Like leave love notes. You know, notes that say, I miss you. Not just in words, but take the effort to... Right, take the time and the effort to write it down. Uh, he's going on a trip to write a note on and put it in his suitcase. Right, uh, write a note. I, you you went out somewhere. I left food for you here. I love you. I miss you or whatever. Doodle your emotions like we do in texting sometimes. A woman who's and I want to talk about being poised because I think the best word from the women's side for sakina for tranquility. In the Quran is this word poised. 
A woman who is poised is not easy to come by. Perhaps she was 30, 40, 50 plus years ago. It was okay, possible. But such a woman is not common these days. An embody, embodied feminine woman is often the epitome of grace, elegance, and poise. The definition of poise is calm confidence in a person's way of behaving or quality of grace. My grandmother, when I saw her with her husband, when they both have passed away, so may Allah forgive them, that they were very calm. The wife was very calm. The wife today is on edge all the time. But the grandmothers, our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers, they were very calm. They were always very poised, right? And that attracts a man. The state of being balanced. The only negative thing about women who are traditionally poised, maybe from an image perspective, is that sometimes this poise tends to be accompanied by a sense of rigidity. The rigidity is not really poise. It doesn't accomplish the balance that is required when one is aiming to be poised and graceful. Some women who are traditionally poised take themselves too seriously and take the issue of poise being uh, quiet and silent too seriously, right? Because it's the type of sakina that allows playfulness in uh, to be... Remember that if you want to be poised and graceful, you still need to maintain your femininity, which part of that is the playfulness. Femininity is not about being rigid, and no feminine woman should be tight and stringent in her manner unless she really needs to be. Okay, unless there's a, so this spontaneity and this freedom and this playfulness, but doing it with grace, right? Doing it with sakina. This, why am I talking about this? And how does this relate to the man getting back his sexual attraction? Because it's not just about the physical being. It's about the essence and the essence is the manners and the etiquettes and the, and the poise and the sakina, and her willing to wear the clothes where she submits to her husband, and wear the clothes where, okay, now, you know, my husband's yelling at me, but she's going to take it uh, with elegance and grace. And she knows it's not him against me. This is just my husband being my husband, just him being like, his his masculinity that's just him doing what he does this has nothing to do with me and since she has that confidence and that grace to know that's him just being him and it's very important that when the man is upset or angry he's not saying you did this and you did this because then you're blaming her and then she's going to react to that and that does not help the marriage at all and then don't expect any good results from that so it's very important that you talk about your feelings with I feel this way, okay? And if the husband says, I feel X, Y, Z, and the wife can say, okay, you feel X, Y, Z, I'm going to do because I love you. I'm going to do X, Y, Z that you want me to do. And it's okay. Rather than argue all the time, that needs to come down and the wife needs to show that elegance because that gives her actually more control of the relationship compared to when she's just fighting all the time. And I'm not saying that's all the women. I'm talking about how the husband can regain and what the wife can do to regain the physical attraction that they once had or at least reach some level of that mature love and mature physical attraction, right? And so... Certain things have to be done on both sides. And no one knows us more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us. And from what he's telling us, this is where science, parts of science are going in that direction and saying, yes, this is how it is. This is what makes a man attracted to a female. So we have studies that show this. And all we have to do is put it all together and ignore all the 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 bogus research about man doesn't even know what it means to be a man or we don't even know what pronouns, who is what pronoun and all that. Just forget about that. Uh, we're in the age of fake science. So before this age of fake science, a lot of these things were already established. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So now what else? 
Now I'm going to say something that my sisters will maybe react to, but I'm going to read it and then let them think about it. Femininity also involves an element of irrationality, and some people, men and women included, make this trait a, a feminine energy. It, it take this trait of feminine energy wrong. It is not wrong. In fact, irrationality or chaos is a typical trait of feminine, feminine energy. This is where a woman's ocean of emotions come in. When a woman is embodied, she is not always zoned out and disconnected from her body due to extensive trauma or bad relationship or bad blood, or she doesn't have the emotional capacity anymore. She naturally seems irrational from a masculine man's perspective. Like, why are you bringing up that from 20 years ago or two days ago even? Okay, This is because the feminine body is not a vehicle of consistency. Women have cycles and their emotions change according to the people in the world around them. So how does this feminine, feminine uh, go together with the idea of po being poised or having sakina and grace? Poise comes from a deeply assured sense of self and authenticity. Like you know you're in a solid place. You're, just because your husband's yelling at you, you don't have to go into flight and fright mode and start fighting back. No, he's just doing what he does. It's that simple. And you don't have to freeze, right? You just know that these are the cycles of your life with him and with you. This authenticity is not possible if a woman is disembodied, which is now what is happening with women being on the edge. Okay. So believe it or not, your femininity and being graceful and poised go hand in hand. So to achieve the balanced nature, and confidence that is necessary in order to be graceful women. You need to resensitize your body. Connect to yourself. Deal with your trauma and your past relationships and your hurt and your pain. And see your marriage as not a boxing match between you and your husband, but that you're on the same team. And sometimes this, if somebody on your team misses the goal, they're going to vent and they're going to be upset that I was trying to do this and it didn't work. You don't take it like, oh, he's being mad at me. You're on the same team. So that type of connection, connect to yourself and allow yourself to feel your emotions authentically. If you don't do this first, then you can never achieve the sense of balance in your personality. So grieve your past pains hurts first. Don't try to force Sakina. You only find Sakina once you've been through this kind of like, uh, process of surrendering and letting go control and not being on the edge okay for now i'll end with this last point about sakina 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 please it is extremely important concept and it's important to remember this especially for the wives that they have to wear the clothes of sakina and they have to wear the clothes of being uh the wife that uh, embodies the femininity that's needed in a relationship. So part of poise is expressing your opinion. It is expressing your opinion is important. It is imperative that you do so with class, integrity, and modesty. Have you ever gone to the food hall or a food court that's packed? Most of us have, right? Have you ever gone looking for a seat or a table to eat and you finally see one so you calmly walk over with your plate of food only to have some rude and disrespectful person sprint and sit right before you do and act like they didn't see you there not only is this frustrating but it's plain terrible behavior it's worse when you look at them at in disbelief and they act like you don't see them or they they act like they don't see you that kind of person knows tables are a busy food court and are scarce but the difference between the person and a poised and graceful person is that they don't have the ability to see the past uh, see past the immediate moment meaning it's very important again these things all tie up that i'm talking about sakina whether you call it being one-dimensional whether you call it being on the edge whether you call it uh you know not having poise whether you call it in, uh, being in a state of uh, survival, in the survival mode, all these modes don't, they constrict you 
and don't let you have good relationships. And all these modes make you selfish, right? Because you're, and why wouldn't you? Because if women are hurt, then they're going to want, then they're, it's going to be hard to open up. But the way to heal yourself is to open up. And so in a relationship, even though this is not about trauma, but it is because you're still dealing with bad behavior from your husband, for example. And so you have to know that the way to deal with it is to have poise, even if he's rude. If you show the good behavior, if you show Sikina, Sikina multiplies. Good behavior multiplies. And so, and to come out of that survival mode, that, secure, that scarcity mode, okay? Sure, there isn't enough sheet seats, but you're a graceful and poised person. Surely you'd be resourceful and calm enough to solve your problem with your husband in other ways. True? What happens is we find ourselves in a problem in our marriage and we feel like, okay, we're at a dead end. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to be, you don't have to have no money to be poor. People that are rich act as if there's scarcity. It's the same mentality. Poor, unelegant people exist as a result of poor mindset. Scarcity mindset is the nemesis of grace and poise, which I'm calling Sakina, especially when it is not necessary. Scarcity mindset often leads to desperation, and desperation isn't a trait of poise. And what does this desperation do? And desperation asks, makes a person think about themselves first and their spouse second. And as long as you're in that state, well, why should I do this? Why should I dress up? Why should I change things? Why should I? That is going to make the relationship. So if a female wants, right, she can change the dynamics of the relationship very easily because she's in a very powerful state. I know I've all I know we've all felt desperate for something in our lives, but acting desperate because you're not aware of the of, of the toll that your scarcity mindset is taking will destroy all your efforts to achieve poise. So are you selfless with your husband or are you selfish thinking what about me? Right? And part of that is femininity, uh, which I'll just clarify very clearly because every wife has only one question in mind with any interaction. Did he think of me? But what I'm saying here is that if you start with an open mindset, then he will he will kick in. As the intimacy, the emotional attraction grows back, the physical attraction grows back, the care goes back, sometimes one of the partner has to start it, right? It's going to be either the husband. So I'm, I'm talking to both, but really... For to go to bed, many times it is in the hands of the wife more than, and, and to create the atmosphere of him being physically attracted to you after there's been bad blood. That's on the wife to, to work on that by not just the physical form, but the essence of what it means to be female. Now, scarcity mindset is not all bad. It's not always bad. It can allow people to address problems swiftly and achieve things you would want to achieve in short term. But in a world where plenty is available, acting from scarcity may hinder your sense of resourcefulness. When your sense of resourcefulness is lacking, then you show up as a person who lacks grace, class, and patience. Meaning, you... Uh, you are not as attractive. That's not the qualities that will attract the husband. This use, lo, lose it, leads you to lose the ability to have sakina. And sakina is where the man wants to go, tranquility. And this l makes you lose. So instead of showing yourself to be vulnerable, you go into survival mode. And the man likes the one who's showing vulnerability. Uh So I think we'll end it here uh, for now. Um, I'll put in the email that you can use to say you want a copy of this, and I'll send you a copy, inshallah. And I'll also send a link for donation, just so I have an idea of how many people are interested in this. But what is that I wanted to say? That if a husband feels his wife is not as attractive to him, he has to look at the root cause. Is it? just physical or is it also emotional and then the two sit down and they have to talk about a plan the wife 
has her homework, the husband has his homework, right? I talk more in this booklet about what the wife has to do to become, this is for the wives that want to become more attractive to their husbands. And so this is for the wives who uh, may feel their marriage is suffering and can use an extra boost and maybe try something different. And so, inshallah ta'ala, I hope this um, booklet will be useful for you. And I think, uh, you know, we went through some good parts of the book and I'm still working on it. So if you send me an email and uh, appreciate your donations if they come through. But uh, if not, then, you know, it is whatever Allah has willed. So let's end over here, inshallah, today. Assalamu alaikum wa